All right. Well, that that's the level of corruption coming out of New York. But let's go from one corrupt uh, state to another corrupt state that's a little bit to the south, Georgia. Robert, I, I mean, you got, you've, you're still a practicing lawyer, so you can't spend all day watching some nincompoop react to the most outrageous evidentiary hearing ever. I don't know how much of it you saw, but I presume you got the, the overview summaries. How effing wild was that two days of hearing? Well, what's your take? I mean, the, uh, 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 I, mean I, I know you had like, your 22-minute uh, summary uh, still that too I long, saw but... part of. But like, what, what was your takeaway from the were you surprised by it were you shocked by it what, what were you what i was, was flabberga- flabbergasted i mean flabbergasted at the level it's it's like it's uh, it's like gangster level corruption uh, uh, at the district attorney level office i mean everything about it i i was flabbergasted at the corruption i was flabbergasted at the incompetence i was flabbergasted at the fundamental uh, you know, the, the incompetence entitlement of these buffoons, like Nathan Wade. I was, I was juxtaposing Fannie Willis's testimony, which was frazzled, unhinged, insanely idiotic, to her composed speech in front of the church. I hired a superstar. Nathan Wade, the superstar? That man, I don't know if you saw the mashup where they ask him, like, have you ever been to a cabin with Fannie Willis? And he, he's like, a cabin. And he's thinking, it was a solid 30 seconds. Someone looped in. Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On with a little cloud bubble of Fannie Willis like in, in, in lingerie. They're, they're, they're incompetent buffoons uh, 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 at, at the base level. All of them. Nathan Wade, incompetent. Terrence Bradley, incompetent. I, I met Fannie Willis's father for the first time. It's like, it, that's what blew my mind. Then you get into their attorneys, Anna Cross, uh, the other guy incompetence it's incompetence from the bottom up but these are the people in charge of the you know the most important elements of society uh i was blown away that fanny willis runs down to testify it was already going badly with terence bradley invoking solicitor client privilege they debate over that um who was i also oh then um the governor barnes i don't know if you i don't know i never knew that guy but he says i turned it down because you know i got mouths to feed and i wasn't interested in the threats the dude turned it down because he's in the golden years of his life and has no interest in this rubbish. But those who need it and those who want to, you know, get get some free money will jump at it. Uh, but I like the judge, and I don't know if I'm being too optimistic. Uh, what's his name? Scott McAfee. People are saying he's up for re-election in May or up for election for a four-year term in May. How will that sway him? I got the impression that even the MSM is getting fed up with this uh, incompetence, corruption, stupidity, uh, immorality, and that when they say it's 50-50 that they get disqualified, the public is ready for a reckoning. So that's where I think it's going to go. But you'll tell me now, Robert, the, the last day after Nathan, no, after Terrence Bradley had his heart ripped out and they say you were, you were let go because of sexual assault, you paid the victim $20,000 through your escrow account, the judge then said, well, if he thought that was solicitor client privilege, now I'm questioning everything he thought was solicitor client privilege. Is the judge going to allow that evidence? Are they going to call back Terrence Bradley? And I don't know what you think the judge is going to do, what's plausible in this, but uh, that's my assessment. Yeah, I mean, well, you have the context of this is that there have been multiple motions to disqualify her. The, that the way in which the grand juries were formed were questioned. She uh, raised money did fun campaign fundraising based on going after Trump that raised uh, serious ethical issues. And the prior courts dodged the question by saying that can be dealt with post indictment. And so now it is. So now you, you already had these prior issues that were part of the basis to disqualify her and to dismiss the indictment. You also had the fact that Wade was never specifically approved of for this role by the uh, Fulton County Commission. She never even sought its approval. The And there's legal history in Georgia that that means he didn't legally have the power of special counsel or the state, which means anything that was produced from him, including the indictment itself, has to be dismissed. So that's the, the in addition, he apparently didn't timely take his oath. That might be an issue in some other states, by the way, but we'll see. The So you've got... Uh, That's the context in which it came out that this was a big, massive money laundering operation, that she was enriched and at multiple levels because the the commission never approved this money for this purpose. This was a bunch of special project money she got 
to hire new prosecutors due to the backlog that built up from the COVID lockdowns. And she's like, look, we got a bunch of criminal cases we need prosecuted or guilty people are going to walk. And it's the county committee, okay, well, we'll give you millions of dollars more. She then took it for a different purpose than the money was given and spent it on prosecuting Trump. She wasn't given approval for that. So the so you got didn't get approval for this special counsel. He never timely took his oath. The uh, she was raising money based on campaigning against Trump. Uh, now she's diverted COVID funds, uh, effectively what were COVID funds, to prosecuting Trump. And then it turns out the reason for all of that, the reason why he was picked, the reason why the money was diverted, the reason why Trump was even pursued for prosecution, is she was laundering the money for her own personal benefit by going on uh, luxury vacations uh, that were being paid for by the state through monies paid to him, when it turns out he's not even qualified to handle the position. He's never done, far from being a superstar, he'd never done a RICO case in his life. And he's bringing a creative novel RICO prosecution that the other little secret here is, the reason why Barnes, he wouldn't admit this. Because he, 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 he would never take it. it. Yeah, it's because the case is garbage. That's why. He's not going to take a preposterous case pursuing a preposterous theory that's going to end his political career and ultimately <laughs> bankrupt him just for a little bit of upfront cash. Uh, the, the amazing thing, by the way, from Barnes's testimony also, you know, his the whole object of his testimony was that he was Fanny's number one pick and Wade was a second thought. Barnes testified that, that Nathan Wade was at the meeting where Fannie Willis approached him. She had already picked Nathan Wade. She wanted some old, you know, respected individual to give credence to her bullshit legal To theory. be the cover guy. To be the face in front of the operation. Wade was always getting the cash, and the cash was going to her. And her excuse is that it, somehow it wasn't really going to her, and that led to a Talix, uh, the great Talix <laughs> meme on our board. That uh, where she was saying, uh, you know, never in writing, always in cash. And that was clearly Barnes's fault, the, uh, my fault for, for, for giving her the in inspiration. Um, but the so I, I, what's clear to me is from a political perspective, it's an embarrassment. Uh, the, the, the legal standard is, is there a conflict of interest? Uh, uh, the, the Georgia prosecutorial ethics rule requires that you have no appearance of a conflict. And it's considered a conflict if anything could impact your impartiality or the appearance of impartiality. And in particular, you're supposed to have no personal, pecuniary, or financial interest in the prosecution. Here, clearly, she did. And so that's the problem she faces is that she violated clear ethics rules for which the remedy can be disbarment and at a minimum disqualification. The political problem the court has, I mean, the court was appointed by Kemp. Kemp is a political hack, deep state guy who covered up the 2020 election fraud, facilitated mm -hmm. it, let Ratberger take the rap for it. But he was the guy refusing to take corrective action. He was the one who Dominion lined his pockets to help give him the sweetheart deal and then not keep Dominion to their word afterwards. He's the one who was coordinating with DeSantis to get DeSantis to run to challenge Trump. He's the one who's refused to do an independent inquiry or investigation or support impeachment of Fannie Willis. So that's who this judge is loyal to. So the question is, do you have a judge that's also corrupted by the process? Because I think the problem for the judge now is it's reached so much public attention, so much embarrassment, so obvious what corrupt, you know, like you said, anybody watching this came away with an impression that these were incompetent rogues and rubes who had no business with the power that they had. Every judge, that judge has to know that. The case is national global profile. So I think he's under, I think the smart political decision for him to make is to disqualify her. And, and appoint, uh, appointed a DA from another county, let them decide if yeah. they pursue the charges. And he still has to address the issue of whether dismissal should occur because the special counsel was never properly appointed in the first place. And so... I mean, the smart thing for him to do would be to dismiss it, say, hey, if it's such a credible case, somebody else will bring another indictment, mm -hmm. you know, if it's if it's clean. But let's start from scratch. And let's have someone totally independent of this process. Let's get rid of the vestigial legacy of these cases. Jenna Ellis can feel like an idiot for pleading guilty to a crime that uh, ultimately was going to be dismissed. But that wouldn't be the first time she felt like an idiot.
uh, at pretty much the definition of her legal career, the uh, and her political career. But the uh, uh, but you know that's the that's the politically correct, smart thing to do. But I don't have confidence that this judge does. And this goes to an issue I've been talking about that I think all of the defense lawyers should start emphasizing. The reason why we're even here is because the Fulton County courts failed to keep do their job. They failed to honor and obey their oath. They were complicit in the election cover-up of 2020 because it, it, uh, President Trump filed his challenge to the electoral contest in a timely manner. If they were supposed to have a hearing within 10 days. They never did. They never held the hearing until after January 6th occurred, and then it was moot by that point. There, the Fulton County Courthouse corruption is the only reason the election contest issues weren't properly adjudicated and may have prevented January 6th from ever happening in the first place. And they need to be reminded that their corruption, their complicity, their culpability is why we're here. So they don't keep repeating it. Because so far, Fulton County has courthouses and judges have failed to show that they have the ethical backbone to do their uh, honor their oath and do their job and enforce the law. And we're going to see whether this judge is a corrupt nitwit like his, the governor that appointed him or is going to honor and obey his oath, because if he does, disqualification is the only action he can take that is legally and constitutionally correct. I, I think he's going to do it, but I've been accused of being too optimistic. But but Robert, if you haven't seen this, if he doesn't, he looks like a total nit. No, that's fraud. the problem. He, he does because there's too many eyeballs on this now to 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 you know to you can't put the shit back in the horse to quote Emily Baker. But Robert, if you haven't seen this, just bear in mind there was no editing in Nathan Wade's response. This is how long he paused before answering the question, and this is going to get copy claimed on YouTube later, but I'll, I'll mute out the music. Look at this. Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever. Ever. No. <laughs> no. Gold. That is absolute meme gold. I don't know who did it. I'm going to share it with Rump with... Uh... Oh, dude, Robert, we're going to hit 30,000 people live right now. There's the link, everybody. If, if share that around. If laundering to engage in illicit affairs by promoting an uh, uh, un improperly approved special counsel who was unqualified for the position for a politically motivated prosecution in violation of the First Amendment based on a novel RICO theory by a Fulton County courthouse that failed to do its job in the electoral contest isn't grounds for disqualification, then nothing is. And so it, the, the only question is, does this judge, one in the Fulton County courthouse and Governor Kemp, do they want to be dragged down by Big Fanny? And if not, then, you know, this daughter of a communist uh, that got into positions of power that is not only incompetent, but corrupt and incorrigibly so, incorrigibly incompetent, incorrigibly corrupt, uh, then the, the entire judicial system will look as, as bad in Georgia as it does right now in the state of New York. Uh, the, the chat in Rumble is going <laughs> is going wild over that meme. It was the greatest thing ever. It drives me crazy that I didn't think about it and that I didn't do it. Robert, before we... So predictions are in. I say I say he will disqualify them. Um, I, and I, and if he I, has a political IQ or survival instinct over 20, yes. 